Who was trying to take advantage? No, I was trying to, I was going to the China man to get some hair, the weave, right. and it's too much money. And okay. he's trying to get over, I already paid $50 for one pack. I'm not going to pay $50 for another pack. So I'm saying get the cheaper brand. He's still saying it's 50 something down. Every time I ask him another tip, he keeps making the money go up. So I'm done with him. So I'm trying to teach her, you don't let people get advantage of you. Don't get upset with me. I'm trying to teach you so nobody won't get over on you. Right. That's it. Right. I mean, I, I saw the lesson. I heard it just, just walking down the street. I said it the right way. I just get upset because she's supposed to have my back. I'm her mother. This, this is what real parenting looks like, folks. Uh, she's, she's, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's real. Is it not real? No, it's real. Okay. So we're on the Mark Norton Show, and I'm here with Angelo Seach. You can call me Serge. Okay, Serge, are you, are you a student here? I'm a student. I'm a freshman here at Temple. Okay, all right. Uh, so what is on your mind? You tell us. So what I have on my mind is how we are kind of in this social bubble on the internet. The way Google and things like that keep us in our own little environment, showing us only what we want to see compared to showing us other people's opinions and stuff like that. So how do you think Google and big franchises like Facebook and stuff like that should uh, well, I, th I, I think that's a big question right now because, uh, it, I mean, it, it started off with just one or two conservative people. They pull them off the platforms. Next thing you know, uh, an, a sitting president was removed. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about free speech. That's kind of a pillar of America. Do you think it's in, in trouble? Well, something has to change within that sort of social bubble. I'm kind of talking more like, so I saw a thing the other day. One friend searched up Egypt on Google and the other friend did the same thing and they got completely different search results. So the way Google kind of traps us in our own little bubble of what we think and yeah, it goes politically and kind of anyway. That's, so. that's, that is very interesting. And, uh, and that, that even makes me think about uh, some of the modern technologies, Alexa mm -hmm. and your Amazon account and everything like that. Yeah. So it sounds like you've already experienced that right there with you and your friends. Yep, so it's, it's a little too invasive to a point. It could be helpful sometimes like people at home have probably experienced like thinking of something in their head maybe even talking about it out loud and then going on google and like seeing ads for it throughout the day stuff like that scrolling through instagram seeing ads you know it's funny uh edward snowden you're familiar with that gentleman right uh, I'm not. okay so he was an intel analyst for, for united states government and he released a ton of our secrets and then and then ran he defected he's, he's currently in russia and he had a he had a obviously through the internet a sit down with joe rogan and that's exactly what he talked about was the listening and and all the user agreements and the things you sign unknowingly just just mm -hmm. by clicking on your phone yeah yeah I, I, along that lines i also saw facebook kind of blocked out a liberals so he was a liberal and yet all his friends were liberals and they posted their content and eventually it blocked out all the conservatives so he only sees one side of things and that goes along the lines for like anything, you know. So it sounds like uh, people are starting to at least catch it and identify it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for both sides, you know, it could, they show you what you want to see, not what you need to see. So here, here we have a young gentleman, he's a freshman, and uh, it sounds like him and his friends are, are catching on uh, with some of the big tech are doing. So I think, I think that's good. I think maybe there's hope, right? Yeah, so yeah, the big question is like, does Google owe the people like a, uh, do they owe them justice? Do they owe them the, the truth, the full spectrum? You could search up anything and find full information on whatever you want, but most people are too lazy to do that, and they just get what's fed to them by big media companies like that. So, well, I think it's I think it's great. Uh, people are starting to wake up. So, thanks, Serge. Yeah, have thank a good you. one. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're. <laughs> So I'm 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 Mark Norton. We're on the Mark Norton show. Hello. What I what I just walked by and what I just saw was a gentleman uh, have the courage. He went up in front of three very nice, attractive young ladies. And how long did he talk to you for? Like four minutes. He put a lot of work in. Yeah, he really did. Okay, okay. And tell me about it. Uh, so he was just telling us his major and everything. We just thought he was being friendly. Then he asked our names, and then he asked my name. <laughs> and he's like, "I want to ask you out." I was like, I have a boyfriend, but thank you. Okay, is it true? Do you? I'm seeing someone right now, yeah. Okay, what do, what do you think about it? It was hilarious. <laughs> We're just trying to get some bagel. And, and, and why is it funny? I mean, just on the street getting a bagel and somebody asked a friend out. <laughs>
Do you think it, you think it's it's kind of crazy now? We live on our phones. That that what just happened, that was the norm before phones. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's awkward. That's crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to say to that. To yeah. be honest. So he so you know many people get rejected all day on their phones. Yeah. He got rejected in real life. Oh. Think about that courage. Do you think it's courageous? Oh, it was brave. It was, it was brave. definitely yeah. brave. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Anything else? It seemed like a, a crazy, wild experience, but it's funny because it, it used to happen every day. So he was very young to be in med school. Oh, yeah. That's oh, he was in med school. He's a med school student. I thought he seemed very young. Wait, you, I don't want to expose him. And you shot him down. <laughs> you got, I don't you know. Down. Nobody else picked him I up? I just wanted my bagel today. He just left. wanted a bagel. He left? He walked away. I want a bagel, not a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right. But are you a student here? Oh, yeah. I'm a student. I'm a junior. Okay, what do you study? Um, international business and marketing. Okay, lead the convo. Tell me what's going on uh, international uh, business. <laughs> Honestly, like I've not been, I've not been up to the up to date, up to date with that. But like, yeah, but like, if I see it in other countries, like in the economy, like especially here, like it's not been looking really handsome in this country. But you know what is happening around the world with and why we're wearing all this masks like this. I've not been looking good for us as of now but hopefully i hope things get better and like all of us can like be able to travel and like do business around the world and i'm with i'm bob birch bob birch okay so what do you think about corona is it real yes it is okay so china just came out china just came out with a new test are you ready for this yeah. do you know what i'm talking about it's an anal swab test. They want people to get swabbed in their butt. What do you think? No, we, we like what we do. Okay, so we, th we don't think we need any more? No, we don't. Okay, I'm Mark Naughton, and I'm here with... Kirsten. Kirsten and Honey. What a, what a lovely dog. She came right up to me. So, all right, Kirsten, so the, the concept of the show is you tell us what to think. We don't tell you, so you lead the discussion. I can, let's see. Since we have Honey here with us, we will talk about fostering dogs. So Honey was a foster during quarantine. I got her. She's from Georgia. She was abandoned in the woods. Um, when I got her, when I got her, she was actually very, very skinny. She had two ear infections, chronic dry eye. She has hip dysplasia and she had like no fur at all when we first got her. And we nursed her back to health and then I kept her. I couldn't give her back. That's wonderful. Was it was it the quarantine? Was it loneliness, perhaps, that made you go to the shelter? Absolutely. I'm a teacher, so I've been teaching from home, and I have not left her side since, so I don't know what she's going to do when we finally go back in, but I don't think we will be this year yet, so okay, she's in luck. She's very lucky for now. Uh, it, what, are, what are your hopes? Uh, how about these children? You think, you think these children are going to adapt well? I mean, the governor of New Jersey, he just suspended that uh, graduation test. Yeah, so what we're thinking is it's kind of a, a dead year. No one's really learning much. So luckily, everyone's in the same boat. Every kid is having that kind of dead year. But luckily, I teach high school, so they're pretty self-sufficient. I give them things to do, and they do it. I feel bad for all my friends who teach younger students who are having a lot of trouble accessing the technology. But I think I'm in a good boat for it. I think my kids are fine. They'll survive. Okay, uh, are you hoping for the open soon? So I won't be going back, and I hope it doesn't open. I'm loving being virtual, being home with my dog all day, and she's loving it too. It takes away all of the behavior concerns and classroom management, so it's a lot, a lot easier. Okay, Kirsten, well, thank you for your time, and, and good luck with uh, you and Honey. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, I'm Mark Naughton, and I'm here with... Christy Eck. Oh, Ellen Davis. Nikki Daker. Mary Schiffer. Okay, and I was just hearing, overhearing, how they have a wildly popular podcast. So what we're out here doing is we want to find out, we want to hear from some ladies in person about lady issues, whatever that means to them, not to me. That's what we're trying to find out. So what are what are your concerns? Is it social, legal, or what, what are you? I'm just curious. <laughs> is this like an alt-right thing? No, this is a... Because you keep saying lady issues, and usually you don't hear that in the progressive community. There's a big push to allow transgenders into female sports. Sarah, is that, is that fair? Where are you at with that? 100% fair. You caught me off guard. <laughs> what would be the right term in the progressive community? Because I, I hear a lot about 
you know, you know the gla the old glass ceiling, and the on. Old glass ceiling. So. Okay, so tell me about it. Um, so I guess you asked what would be the right term for lady issues. I guess it would be like problems affecting the f women and femme community. <laughs> um, I would just say, you know, we're just getting affected by the same things that everybody else is. We're just out here fighting for our rights. Um, you know, we want that COVID-19 bill passed. We want uh, equal representation. Yep. What do you want, Christy? I, yeah, I feel like you said it right, Nikki. We want the same things as everybody else. Oh, this is... <laughs> I didn't realize this was a video. They want their own sports leagues, and now men are going... Former men, excuse me, are going to enter. What is... Does that sound like equality? I can literally only think about the things that are affecting me today. What's affecting you today? <laughs> Tell us about the lift drive! Tell us about the lift drive! I, I'm, I'm lonely! <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We'll make we'll make it fast. It's cold out here, so we really are gonna. It's really cold out here. We're too scared to eat inside, so we have to eat outside. I fucking hate this. It's freezing. Oh, uh, our four, she's vegan. She's gonna eat just. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. It's wild to think that everything women have been through, and now they have to compete against men, literally. My opinion is, is completely unfair. And, and this is the first time I'm, I'm giving my opinion up, but I have five women here. But those people feel like they're... Those, they feel like they are women. They sure do. They absolutely feel they that. They think that they're a woman, so maybe they should be allowed to play. If they, they could compete against other men, but now they're competing against but they women. they think that they're a man. They think that they're a woman. It's too confusing of a topic for me to discuss. <laughs> Well, that's 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 the challenge. Is w the question is genetically are they pre predisposed to other strengths that 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 I don't know. I guess once you take certain uh, so once you take certain hormones, does that make you more? Does that level the playing field? I guess that's the question. So the science does not support it being level at all. Oh really? Absolutely. <laughs> I have not done studies, Sarah, but I think I think you know that the results are are incredible. They are, the, the level of testosterone is still there, oh, wow. and the shape of their body is still That's there. This, it doesn't change their center so of gravity. Should they be allowed to compete with men? I, I mean, should they? They are allowed. Should, wait, I'm confused. Depends on which, this is, I'm not good at speaking. <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're speaking just fine, Sarah. Uh, we have to go is, this, to is this an internet show? It's on YouTube, it's called The Mark Naughton Show. And mm -hmm. it's like I said, 60, 90 second street interviews. Mm -hmm. And and the funny thing is, we usually get our best work with people waiting for the buses. It's 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 funny. Okay. Because you're, you're sitting here, you're bored, mm -hmm. things are on your mind. Yeah. So now <laughs> so now here's your chance. Well, I don't take the bus every day. Okay. So tell tell me, other than uh, other than the bus, more importantly, what's on your mind? What I'm about to do when I get home, pretty okay. much. Yeah. Tell me about it. Oh, my family. I got a I got a uh, a four well five month old baby. And I got a six-year-old son, so once I, I just got off of work, so once I get home, it's, 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 that's my second job right there, pretty much. That's all. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Are these? Are these? Uh, I have I have one child of my own, um, mm -hmm. six years old, and I'll tell you, uh, how is it? How is it in the pandemic with a baby? During the pandemic, it's tough. Um, with my son being six, uh, you know, virtual learning is, is is tough. We're humans, you know. We're not used to. Um, you know, not socializing and, and being in contact with people and, and, and interacting, you know what I mean? So that's definitely the difference. My son, uh, you know, at home, virtual learning, he's learning, you know, but however, he, he's, it's not him, you know what I mean? He likes to be around other kids uh, in general, you know, so uh, at home, uh, when he's on, when he's at school, a lot of distractions, you know, he's home. So, so when he's schooling, I got the TV on, he's always turning around and this and that, you know, so like, it's tough being a parent for sure. It's probably, the, the, it's probably a lot like adults working from home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't mind working from home, but then again, going to work every day is, is, is actually my break from home. You know what I mean? I, I don't right. like being in the same spot all day, every day. At the, at the beginning, I did like it, you know, the whole staying at home. I work for a school system. 
So uh, during the pandemic, schools went virtual, you know, and we was we just went back. But um, at this moment now, uh, we went back. But before, you know, we was on we was doing virtual for like the first 60 to 90 days. So it was just a huge difference in general. I, I recall just in my personal life, uh, for, you know, with the initial quarantine and everything, everything was Netflix, mm -hmm. Tiger, Tiger King. Everything was fun and games. Right, right, right. Well, uh, I remember Tiger King. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And that seems so long ago. Yeah, it does. Wow, that was the beginning of the pandemic? As, well, as, as far as where America started to, to do the lockdown, yeah, I remember it, was, it was around about that time. You're, okay. you're talking about almost a year now. Oh, okay, yeah, it has been a year. But I do remember Tiger King and what happened, whatever happened to him. He's, he's, he's still, still he's still he's still locked up. He did not get the Trump pardon. Oh wow! And what? Oh, so that's what he tried this year? Well, he was hoping he was hoping for a pardon. In fact, they had they had a limo outside waiting for him. Oh wow! And he did not get the pardon. And and what about uh, Basket, Carol Carol Basket? She is still running her her animal sanctuary, as far as I understand. Yeah, I, I did. I definitely enjoyed that show for sure. I liked it. Yeah. But yeah, man, the pandemic is, is harsh. I'm just happy to have a job, to be honest. Okay. I'm happy. I'm happy to still, you know, have a job. Because that, that's the funny thing is they're only giving it to people who test negative. Uh -huh. I, yeah, I understand that. And I mean, that's not us. Yeah. So you're not, you're not going to get the anal swab? No. Okay, Bob. Thanks for your time. Yes, thank you. So from a business perspective, uh, is you think um, we're doing this wrong? All these restrictions and shutting down small businesses and um. such? To be on, it depends on the kind of uh, small business. Like, if you put it like this, like if the small businesses are like following like the proto, like following the protocols, which like we kind of know that they are. Like, I don't see like why they need to like shut up, like shut down, like especially like with gyms. Like back in like September, November, like gyms were closed in Philadelphia because of cases like were like rising up like really high. Like, but like when I like check, when I like checked, when I checked it, like. There's over like a hundred, a lot of people that shine up, that check, that check in into the gyms, and like, I don't think like it, the cases that came from there, from there. So like, it's not really like fair on that, on that end. To be honest, you gonna get the vaccine? Hell no. Why not? I just don't trust it, man. You know, I'm I'm a spiritual guy. You know, so so with that being said, I'm I'm I look to the higher power, but I don't trust the vaccine at all. I do believe in scientists. I do believe in that type of stuff. Um. I'm not saying I would I would never get it because it's a vaccine, but it, it came too fast. I took the flu shot plenty of times, you know, but how long the flu shot's been out for? For many years, probably before I was born. I'm 30. The vac the pandemic happened, and 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 they got a vaccine within a year. Have you heard about China? Their new testing method? No. Oh yeah, in the, in the anal, right? That's correct. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's out. I don't know how effective that is. I'll just say like with, with Joe Biden now, like. Hopefully we can hopefully see like a difference and like see like this COVID nineteen be more contained, be more contained, and be more in a better position than we than we were like a couple like back in like a couple a few months ago. You gonna take the vaccine? Um, if it's available to me, I don't see why not to take it. I mean, if I take it, it just see and like hopefully it'll be good for me. I don't see anything wrong with it at this point so like i think I would, i'll take i'll take it if it's when it's available to me okay thanks for your time it's not a problem all right have a wonderful day all right guys mark Nolan here again uh i hate to tell you this but it's how the youtube algorithm works like share and subscribe it's the only chance the show has thanks guys